Snow and Grease Analysis. This method is applicable to the quantitative determination of oil and grease, hexane extractable material, hem, and mineral oil and grease, silica gel treated hexane extractable material and water. Oil and grease provide the measure of hexane extractable non volatile oils and greases, which may be of either petrogenic or natural origin. Mineral oil and grease determines only non volatile non-polar oils, and greases. Most natural oils and greases, e.g. vegetable oils, animal fats, are polar, and are excluded from the mineral oil and grease parameter. Hexane extractable material recovered by the oil and grease method may include non volatile petroleum hydrocarbons, waxes, animal fats, mineral and vegetable oils, soaps, sulfur compounds, organic dyes, chlorophyll, etc. Mineral oil and grease may include any of the above components that are sufficiently non-polar such that they are not irreversibly absorbed to activated silica gel. Caution is advised with the interpretation of results. This method is designed to fully recover most organic compounds with boiling points that are equal to or greater than that of mixaticane. NC16, B part 297 degrees Celsius. It is not applicable to the measurement of low boiling organics like solvents or gasoline range fuels. The lighter portions of metal distillate petroleum fuels, e.g. diesel fuel oils, may be partially lost during the solvent removal step of this method. A high bias may be achieved from co-extractives which are not oils or greases. Detailed procedures are not provided in this method. Refer to the EPA method 1664 for further guidance. Samples should be visually assessed and checked for pH prior to extraction. If not already done, adjust sample pH 2 to using HEL or H2SO4. Sample volumes are measured gravimetrically or volumetrically to at least the nearest 10 milliliters. Samples are sequentially extracted with three aliquots of hexane in a separatory funnel. Samples are shaken vigorously for two minutes per extraction. The first aliquot of hexane is used to rinse the sample container so that its entire contents are transferred to the extraction vessel. The ratio of solvent to sample should be no less than 120, i.e. 50 milliliters of hexane, per extraction per one L of sample. The solvent extracts are passed through a drying funnel containing anhydrous sodium sulfate and combined together. Emulsions frequently occur during the extraction of mini oil and grease samples. When encountered, precautions must be taken to ensure that adequate extraction efficiency is attained. Centrifugation ultrasonication and the addition of NaCl are recommended to separate emulsions. For oil and grease, the extract is evaporated to dryness at ambient temperature, 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. Following evaporation, residual water, solvent, and other volatiles are removed by heating in an oven at 50 to 60 degrees Celsius for 30 to 60 minutes or by continued evaporation at ambient temperature prior to gravimetric determination. Of the residue using at least a four-place balance, if the final evaporation step is done at ambient temperature, Gravimetric measurements must be done to constant weight. See prescriptive elements. For mineral oil and grease, the hexane extract is cleaned up with 100% activated silica gel, 60 inch from pore size, 7230 mesh, using either an in situ or column based process. Extracts may be cleaned up directly after extraction or may be reconstituted into hexane after an initial oil and grease determination. Activate silica gel by drying at 200 to 250 degrees Celsius for at least 16 hours. A default amount of 3.0 plus or minus 0.3 grams of silica gel is recommended, which is generally assumed to have an adsorptive capacity for up to 100 milligrams of M. For samples that are known or expected to exceed 100 milligrams of M, additional silica gel may be used, or a suitable quantitative portion of the extract may be treated with silica gel prior to the mineral oil and grease analysis if necessary. Another portion of the extract may first be tested for oil and grease to determine the total M content. After silica gel treatment, the extract is filtered and then evaporated to dryness at ambient temperature, 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. Following evaporation, residual water, solvent, and other volatiles are removed by heating in an oven at 50 to 60 degrees Celsius for 30 to 60 minutes or by continued evaporation at ambient temperature prior to gravimetric determination of the residue using an analytical balance or place minimum. If the final evaporation step is done at ambient temperature, gravimetric measure. Mints must be done to constant weight. See prescriptive elements 0 or 2.
Welcome to our solvent extraction video. In this video, I will demonstrate how to use a separatory funnel to separate two immiscible solvents. First thing is to clamp the separatory funnel firmly into a retort stand and make sure that the tap at the bottom is closed in order not to lose any solvent. You might want to use a funnel in order to fill the separatory funnel and we are going to at first our organic phase secondly we add our aqueous phase which we are going to use for the extraction of any solute that we don't want to have in our organic phase here you can see the two layers separated by the interface After you have removed the funnel, stopper the separatory funnel and hold the stopper firmly in place while you turn over. As you could hear, some pressure has built up that needs to be vented. Again, as you could hear, the same happened after you shook the solution. After you vented it the last time and swirled it a little bit to aid the phase separation, you would clamp it again in the retort stand. And importantly, remove the stopper, otherwise some more pressure will build up and force the solution to run out at the sides. The phase separation takes some time. You have to be patient until you cannot see any separation taking place anymore. This process will take a little bit depending on the nature of your solute and the solvents. Now we run out the lower layer. Do that carefully towards the end of the process and stop it in time before the upper phase arrives. In order to remove all impurities, we might want to wash the organic phase a second time. So we add some more of our aqueous phase and repeat the whole process of stoppering the separatory funnel, venting it, shaking it venting it in the process and clamping it back to the retort stand again and again making sure that after we clamped it we remove the stop at the top to avoid pressure so after the phases have separated you might be facing the question which one is the organic and which one is the aqueous phase a simple way to test it is to add a little bit of the aqueous phase at the top and watch whether it is running through the top layer or whether it's being collected in the top layer. As you could see in this example, it was running through, so the aqueous phase in this example was the bottom layer. Please be aware that it might not be in any case an aqueous phase or an organic phase. It could also be two immiscible organic phases. In any way, you have two phases of which you want to keep one now and the other one you want to discard. Not just discard yet, just keep it in a conical flask until you are sure that what you want to collect is in the other phase. So after you have separated the phases, you will ultimately collect the organic phase that contains your desired solute in a conical flask. And all that remains now is to remove residual water. Drying is achieved with anhydrous magnesium sulfate, which has the property of attracting molecules of water so it will remove any residual water in your organic phase so after we've added a portion of magnesium sulfate we swill the solution in case you will be left with chunks of magnesium sulfate you will need to add some more however if you have a flaky suspension of magnesium sulfate as in this example you have effectively dried your solution and all that remains is to separate the solid from the liquid which is achieved by a standard filtration. There are two ways you can do this. One option would be to do it under vacuum filtration, the other one to do it under atmospheric pressure. The first one will be a vacuum filtration, so you would be connecting the vacuum tubing, closing the white tap, and before you open the vacuum through the gray tap, you have to put on the filter. We're going to be using a Hirsch funnel and a small filter paper. 
you put that into the hash funnel and the whole funnel on top of the Vishnu flask. So at that point you would be switching on the vacuum, which is the gray tap, turn that on fully. And then take your suspension. You might want to shake it up a little bit. In this way, the filter gets quickly weighed down by the magnesium sulfates. When you do the filtration, make sure that none of the liquid or the foam above the liquid gets sucked into the vacuum tubing. So filter it in, filter it in a couple of portions until all the suspension is through. Once you have done that, you will be ending up with a solution in the Pichner flask and your magnesium sulfate in the Hirsch funnel. Also, you can plug the outlet of a standard funnel with some cotton wool and use that to filter your solution into a standard conical flask. This whole process affords also a yellow solution. However, the whole process is much, much slower and it is sped up in this video. To summarize, in this solvent extraction part of that experiment, you use the differential solvating power of two inmissile solvents to extract and purify a solute, and you ended up after filtration with a clear, dry solution of your solute.